This is part one in a two-part series about typographic hierarchy on the web. In this first one, I'm going to go over a general introduction of typographic hierarchy and look at some of the steps you can use to implement it on a website. So the first step is to know and read your content. And this is something people gloss over sometimes, but really the the main purpose of a typographic hierarchy is to help the user understand what's important on the page and be able to understand it and go through it. Um, I'm going to use a couple sites here as some examples. And in this case, I'm using a CSS conference. And what we're talking about here is the ability to know quickly. You can sort of see, all right, this is the main title. We can see our navigation, uh, the date of it. We have a register button. Now, there are a lot of other design techniques used for this in terms of layout and so forth. But what we're talking about here in this one is the type choices. Uh, and so you can look at color, size, um, background color, font used, and so forth. Uh, and so those are all things that we can see where they use it. And so in this case, I'm going to focus on the schedule because uh, I'm going to have another example to, to look at as well. And so what we're looking at here is understanding the content. So this is a schedule. Uh, it has a date, time, uh, title, right? schedule. We have a date. We have time. We have a title of an event a description of an event. And because this is a conference where people are speaking, uh, for a lot of those we have a speaker, uh, which here has their picture, here's the title again, uh, and a description. And so what you'll start to notice uh, is that the same content, so here we have a title, another title, should be styled the same way. It makes it quick for people to do, right? All of our times are styled. And they're also styled differently from each other so that the name of the author is styled differently from the title, which is styled differently from the text. Okay, the next part is to get the HTML right, meaning you want to use the correct headings, divs, and other elements to mark up the page semantically. And so I'm going to show another example here, too, while we're talking, of a conference schedule that's not quite s styled with a great typographic hierarchy. Now, it doesn't have none. right? So we do have here a hierarchy that distinguishes the fact that it's a schedule, who wrote it, and the fact that that is different from the date that it was written. But then pretty much everything from here in is all styled the same. And this is often common when people have to put content into a content management system. Uh, and they get to just paste it in, and they don't have a lot of choice on it. Uh, so no offense to the author here. They may not have had a lot of ability to do it, but let's look at what's actually different. Right? What they want to know is this is the date. This is sort of an overall title of pre-conference workshops. This is the time of it. This is the name of the workshop. Uh, this is some more description that it's on day one. This is the location, and this is the description of it. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven different types of content that really should be getting different typographic treatments. So we can see that and scan them. Right? That way when we go down and we see the next one, which has a very similar st structure, date, let's erase that, date, right, title, location, description, uh, that that would also get it, and we could like quickly go through. Okay. Uh, also, this is played out through the HTML. So if we go back to the CSS conf, I'm going to use a little tool here called the HTML5 Outliner. It's a, it's a plugin for Chrome extension, I should say. Uh, and this shows me how we've how the author, sorry, has created the page. Uh, and so very easy to see. Okay, here's the you know. Boston, the time and date, that's the conference, um, the schedule, there's all of our, our schedule in there, and the committee, pre-conference workshops, etc. 
Now if we go back to this other one and use that same tool, this is what we get. All right, we can't really see much in there. There's a nav, and then the schedule here uh, is all one big chunk uh, with a section after it. Uh, and so to get a little bit more into that HTML, just to show an example from a, from a good um, example, I'm going to use the HTML5 inspector. So I just right-clicked on the name of that presenter and inspected it. And so we're going to see that this was the whole div was given a class of speaker entity. So you want to use classes um, more than the HTML5 elements as selectors in your CSS often. Uh, and you'll actually see here, if we go to speaker name, and I click on that, that's how they styled it. They used the schedule ID, and then speaker entity, and then the H2. And in fact, in some cases, the H2 wouldn't even be necessary. Uh, so then we go to the next person, uh, this is the other speaker, and if we inspect that person, we will also see that it has the exact same H2 with a class of speaker name. Also inside a div with a class of speaker entity, just like the other one. And so these, um, using the same HTML and classes around the same types of content make the styling easily and possible. Right, if you don't have anything around it, so let's just do an inspection on this one. So if we look here, there is, I'm not sure <laughs> exactly, these look like more automated uh, classes that are added in, um, but they don't give us a lot of information, right? It's just paragraph with the same class on pretty much everything. DR equals a letter, it's not even a class, sorry. Uh, it, it's just something else for that training. So without any separate elements and classes around the time, the title, the location, the description, we can't style it differently. So that's part of what is meant when, uh, right here, to get the HTML right. You want to make sure that everything that is different and needs to be styled differently has an element around it and often has a class as well. Uh, in the next section, we'll sort of cover all of this again and look at actually styling some text. Uh, a quick uh, link here too, this is the HTML5 outliner extension that I used to show those outlines.